these 20-something meters and exit the arch safely is an enormous risk. It is this particular challenge that summons scuba divers to the blue hole. Many of them never come back. Tariq Omar is a technical dive instructor based in Dahab. Known by many as the bone collector, Tariq has been responsible for retrieving many bodies from the depths of the blue hole. This is Chris. It's 2000. This is Barbara in 1998. This is Martin and, and Connor. Young, yes. 23, 24, maybe younger. This is Yuri, the Russian guy. We heard of Yuri, of course. What we could do. What it's meant to be, it will be. We cannot change it. Open to me. Who art thou? Whither goest thou? What is thy name? I am one of you. Yuri Lipsky, just 24 years old. He was from Moscow. He was ambitious and well-educated. He followed any undertaking to its logical conclusion. He enjoyed self-improvement, and scuba diving was his passion. One April morning in 2000, a few owners of the small cafes at the shore of the Blue Hole saw a man in full scuba gear. He had a hard time finding a partner, a local Egyptian guide. He was fussing over his video camera for a long time, but then fastened it to his suit and attached the lens. Then, he confidently stepped into the abyss. The Bedouins, accustomed to this kind of activity, watched with indifference as the young man set out on what was to be his final dive. We got him after maybe two days or three days when his family arrived, his dad and mom, and he really wanted the body back. And then we went for, for the body. When I find Yuri and his camera, the camera, it was, I think, able to go to 75 meters. So, logically, I thought maybe at 115 after three days, this camera is gone and been flooded. So, whatever in it, it's okay. No, no, nobody can see, especially the family. But we washed his equipment and I washed the housing from the outside. We tried to open the housing and I was surprised that the camera is dry and I have a, even a bit of dust on it. We ran the camera, plugged it on the electricity, and we ran the camera, and it was very sad because we have 10 minutes of Yuri and his family back on the Dead Sea with his father and uh, his uh, other mother and his sister and Blaine, and then two minutes blank, and then Yuri dying. They say this place sends strange signs and warnings. They talk warily of its secrets. Mysteries go unexplained. Yuri Lipsky never came up that April morning, and no one really knows why. Rumors circulated among divers that Yuri had captured his own death on camera. But our production team found the truth about the tape and what it had recorded. Yuri doesn't die on the recorded tape. He's preparing to return to the surface. He's alive and very much in control. He seems relaxed and confident. He doesn't scream or call for help. He just quickly descends to the bottom. His computer shows enough air to resurface. And then, his camera mysteriously turns off. If you carefully watch Yuri's tape, up until the very moment the video camera turns off, you can hear his breathing. It's a little uneven as he descends, and then becomes even. The camera stops recording video, but continues taping Yuri's relaxed breathing. And only later does it turn off completely. So what happened in those five minutes? Something strange happened to him at the bottom. At the beginning of his ascent, he can't resurface. The wing of his buoyancy compensator dumps air when he tries to inflate it. He throws away weights and disentangles from his cables and batteries, but again fails to inflate his BCD. His camera clearly records the sound of air being expelled into the water. He pulls out his surface marker buoy while descending further and further, rolling down the slope. He is sinking out of control. 
the fog of nitrogen narcosis closes in. But he understands he must hold his breath. Every breath of air at this depth could cause fatal, uncontrollable convulsions. Years later, divers continue to discuss the technical details of Yuri Lipsky's dive. Up until the moment when the camera turned off, Yuri was taking all the right steps to resurface. He didn't panic or call for help. He attempted to solve the problem that was clearly puzzling him. But what was the problem? Equipment malfunction? Or is there a more ominous message? <laughs> 